Hi there. This video is an introduction to Markov models. It's for people who haven't really used them before, and it's with a view to eventually learning how they're used in health economics. The key thing about Markov models is that it doesn't matter where we've been, only where we are, and you'll come to see what I mean. First off, let's consider a toy example. We want to study how somebody plays rock, paper, scissors, and we've observed how they've played a number of games. And here's the data. They chose rock 40 times, paper 30 times, and scissors 30 times. Okay, that gives us a little idea of how we might be able to beat them, but what if we dig a little deeper? Well, it turns out that after choosing rock, they only chose rock a second time, eight times. They were much more likely to pick paper or scissors. On the other hand, if they chose paper, they were much more likely to go back to rock than to stick with paper or to switch to scissors. And if they were using scissors, they would probably go back to rock or maybe scissors, slightly less likely to go to paper. We can present this table in a different way, like this. So we've got a three by three table, which we would call a transition matrix. On the column, uh, first column, you can see rock, paper, and scissors. And then for each row, it gives us the probability of going from that choice to the next choice. So reading the first row, if you were already on rock, the probability of staying on rock would be 20.5%, whereas the probability of moving to paper would be 41%, and the probability of moving to scissors would be 38.5%, and so on. We can draw a diagram for what this looks like. So we have our three different choices, rock, paper, and scissors. If you're on rock, as we said before, there's a 0.205 probability of remaining in rock. There's a 0 0.410 probability of moving to paper. And there's a 0.385 probability of moving to scissors. And we can fill that diagram out for the transitions from the paper state and from the scissors state, as you can see here. We've described the behavior of a player using a Markov model with three states. You'll notice that the model includes time. It has discrete time steps, which in Markov modeling are called cycles, but in this case, each time step is one game. Once we've got a Markov model, we might like to simulate from it, and there are two ways to do this. There's micro simulation and cohort simulation, and I'll show you both. Here's a micro simulation. We start off in the rock state, and then we sample randomly from the different transitions out of rock according to their probability. And in this case, scissors is what we move to. Now we have possible transitions and we sample again. And in this case, we go back to rock and we sample again. And we're going back to scissors. We sample again. This time we're going to paper. One more time we sample, we would be heading on to rock. So a Markov micro simulation might give you a result such as this. Rock, scissors, rock, scissors, rock, scissors, paper, rock, scissors, rock, scissors, etc., etc. But of course, each time you'd get a completely different sequence here. Another way you can simulate from a Markov model is with something called Markov cohort simulation. So let's imagine that there were a thousand games and you started off with rock. Well, in the next game, we would estimate, because there's a 20.5% probability of you sticking with rock as your strategy, that 205 times you would be using rock in the second round. However, we estimate 410 times you'd be using paper and 385 times you would be using scissors. Nice and easy. The next row, it gets a bit more complicated and we'll take it one at a time. If you're going to stay in rock or if you're going to play rock in the third round, you will either do it because you were in using rock in the second round 205 times you did that, and then there's a 20.5% chance of you doing it again. So 20.5% of 205 is 42. If you had previously played paper, 
and 410 times this was the case, there's now a 63.3% chance that you would move to rock. So that corresponds to 260 times that would happen on average. And then finally, if you played scissors in the second round, 385 times, then 40% probability of playing rock in the third round, so that corresponds to 154 on average. And if we add those together, we would expect that in 456 of these games, you'd be playing rock on the third round. We do those same calculations again, and we estimate that you would be playing paper on 269 of the games in the third round and scissors in 275 of the games in the third round. We can repeat this process again and again. And actually, if we carry on going to infinity, we'd find that this is the state that we would end up in. So with Markov models, it doesn't matter where we've been, only where we are. And they allow us to model behavior over time. And you've learned about micro simulation and cohort simulation. Your next steps can be to simulate the rock, paper, scissors model in Excel or R, or to look at using Markov models in health economic evaluation.